Yes, we are ready to go, please. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. All the main people are here. I believe we can, we can start. My name is Yuri. Today, I will tell you about theoretical part and we'll show you practically how to test web-based applications and some mobile applications and many more. I will answer your questions today. By the way, if you see this uh, presentation slide, I also was the student of the Spartanov Computer School not so long ago, literally three, four years ago. I used to work in Dell company, in Deloitte, now I work for Apple. Okay, it's just small, small intro of myself. Today, today I would love to give you an introduction lecture to the accessibility testing. Uh, how everyone has 60 up to 90 minutes today, because this session, again, will be split into two parts. I'll give you seven minutes of uh, break, there'll be a recess, you can, you can drink or visit some some rooms okay uh let's go ahead mm. again if you feel uh that i'm too too fast or i'm too slow just let me know in the slack channels uh, we can we can that accelerate or if you're not getting anything i'll just make it simple example or rephrase that thought in different words uh, okay let's begin uh, how many people here in this audience really know what is the accessibility testing uh, draw your hands please in the slack uh, sorry in the skype channels and give you literally a minute or so what is the accessibility or assumption? There is no right or wrong answer. Just tell me what is it about? Just looking. You don't know, I don't know. That is fine. That's why you're here to know what is the accessibility testing. Okay, actual accessibility uh, lays on the brink of many uh, things of modern web development. Accessibility right uh, in the center of web, different web standards of uh, different natural rules of uh, usability and assistive technologies, hardware, whether it is software back to the presentation. Accessibility actually answering the question before. Web accessibility is about creating websites, different web applications, different devices, environment, buildings, tools, everyone, barrierless, um, regardless of their abilities. It is about allowing people everyone with disabilities, without disabilities, to perceive, understand, and navigate, interact with the internet. Actually, if you see that abbreviation, just, uh, just split into four letters, which stands for accessibility. Okay, where can we meet the accessibility? Wherever you may roam, you will meet the accessibility. Uh, anywhere you have a mobile application or interact uh, with any interface, any design next to you, for example, on this slide, you're driving, let's, let's imagine you're driving with one hand for some reason you're holding your uh, device with Apple Maps, with other hand you just steering the wheel, you're driving or you making a call and you involved in different processes such as like i don't know speaking or driving and your application must be accessible as much as possible in this situation because you 
temporarily have ability, uh, partial ability to interact with your application just with one hand, with one finger, it should be super easy and accessible. Uh, or or you just holding a kiddo on this slide again, on one shoulder and other hand you're speaking over the phone. Uh, that's all accessibility. Or looking at this slide, you can see uh, these beautiful uh, letters, which called officially closed captions. Or also, this is, this is a joke. We call these uh, closed captions. Why so? Uh, this joke comes from uh, when automatic tool of YouTube is just grabbing your speech and trans transforms just in there into the text poorly. It doesn't make any commas or uh, full stops. It doesn't come with capital letter. It looks like uh, just uh, smooth blah 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 with no stops. You're not able to understand that those are captions. Uh, uh, we should separate closed captions from subtitles. There is a definite difference between them I tell you later. Uh, and while watching that video before I showed you, you've been able to see that uh, the same closed captions. Uh, why do we need these uh, things, uh, these assistive technologies? So these uh, closed captions or subtitles, they usually are needed for deaf people, for people with loss of hearing, with trouble of hearing, for aged people not hearing well, or of course uh, for language learners, not necessarily English language, it can be applied to any other language, so-called non-native speakers. Now, this is assistive technology which makes your life easier. Okay, uh, we'll talk about all the disability types in the next slide of this lecture. But another slide will tell you, um, let's say you and board it and you're flying uh, on the plane. Uh, you have this beautiful screen on the seating, but you don't have for some reason your headphones, but you wanna but you wanna watch to the movie actually. You're still able to read what's going on on the screen, turning on that feature of of closed captions or subtitles or whatever you like to call that. Sometimes we do substitute to terms and use that mistakenly there is a misconception. Uh, that is fine, uh, we'll be kind for that. Uh, or let's say you are in airport and this is a crowd place, you're not able to hear well, uh, these closed captions or any other things will make your life easier, or you during the music show on the concert, uh, you text usually, right? Uh, you you see it visually, or in a metro bus, you don't you want to save your conversation private, uh, or during your work sessions, uh, or you don't understand the language. For example, beautiful French movie. Uh, okay, Let, let's talk about uh, different disabilities to understand future testing. We we need to know. This is must know information now. How those disabilities are being uh, qualified? What types of disabilities we have? It will be fun. It's not so really boring. So uh, let's dig uh, into the disability in details because uh, in this uh, basis for us as testers to understand, to be familiar, in order to get the apps tested, to get the comprehensive test coverage. Okay, uh, here we see in the illustration of time-related disabilities. For example, this case in airport, on the airplane, or driving, those not, not just uh, natural, those just time-related uh, disabilities, not ability to act or to do something. 
Uh, on top of these are just regular, in quotes, regular people, timely limited in ability to, to do anything. I, I just gave you example before, right? An ability to hear or to see or in the night, for example, we not, not everybody cats. Aging people are not able to hear us so well as we young population. Uh, to react so fast, to lift a weight, to remember that all we have is temporarily. Uh, getting older, we lose our ability to do so well. Uh, mild disabilities or language barriers and severe disabilities, uh, such as paralysis, motorial dysfunction, handicapped uh, guys, uh, situational disability while driving usually, it's just environmental uh, situations. Temporal disability, you're temporarily not able to, um, to work. You broke a leg or a hand. You, you got a trauma in a, uh, in your, in a gym or you have a heavy stress. You have a loss in your family or loss of concentration. And that is temporarily disability, uh, looking this at this side. This is not a temporary disability. Okay, types of disabilities are being classified into five main categories, visual, we not see or we see bad, or we achromatical people, or we are so-called, um, what is called, and color blindness people. There are three types of color, color blindnesses. Uh, you're not able to recognize red from green or so. Uh, auditory, uh, you're not able to hear well. You're not able to understand well and react so fast. Physical disabilities and speech disabilities. Some people are dyslexia, sluttering, cluttering, uh, speech sound disorder. Okay, that's that's important to know for us. Uh, American Disabled Act 508 or 504, 502, 3, those must be uh, laws if you work and operate in the United States, in Canada, if your organization or company is being uh, funded fully or partially in money from government, you must comply to those acts. This is law. This is the letter of law and this is important. Okay, uh, word of accessibility. Uh, you might be wondering what is the uh, situation in the world? Like, uh, uh, let's say Europe, uh, European Union, they have their own standards of information classified those similar to American Disabled Act. Uh, Australian government agency uh, for disabled guys, they have the similar thing. British guys, Canadians, and even Russia. Those requirements of uh, availability for people with loss of uh, seeing, which is ghost, okay? It's very funny because I was I was visiting the uh, Gos Uslugi government uh, services dot ru and it used to be bad and now I will show you today this website it's getting getting much much better uh, why it's really important uh, other than just to reduce the low risk compliances not to be punished not to lose money it really improves your user experience, right? Makes your application really, really good. Makes it competitive on the market. You have the good UX, you will have perfect UI. Uh, marketable increases market value. Uh, better organic search uh, for websites, so-called SEO, search engine optimization things. Uh, when you involve people uh, of those disabled populations into your economy, uh, everybody adventure, uh, get an advantage from that. Disabled people involved into the social activities live longer. It means they pay tax longer. 
I'm kidding. Make the world a better place to live for everyone, nothing permanent, and you will lose your ability to do or to get something and prepare this better future for ourselves. Just selfish motivation. Um, and this is a joke. Okay. Uh, this is some statistics like 40. 0.8 million of United States uh, population have some different types of disabilities. 7.7 uh, .7 million of disabled folks uh, just involved into the labor market. They have, uh, you know, they are employed and since this time frame, 2016-2020, uh, they are actively involved in economics of our country. And this is median earnings uh, in 2020, $25,000 uh, per uh, person, uh, average earning uh, that person can make uh, a year. What percentage of the world is able overall? 1.3 billion people over the world or 16% of the whole population is uh, affected with different types of disabilities. These are the census official stats. We can see with no disability, 81% of folks, 41% of folks are uh, impacted. Uh, different, uh, we know different types of disabilities, hearing, vision, cognitive, uh, ambulatory self-care, and this is breakdown of this percentage. Now this is uh, how much disabled people work uh, I'll share this presentation file with you. You can you can you can jump into these uh, stats. Okay, four principles of accessibility. This is very important. Uh, four letters: poor, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. That should be uh, understandable. Uh, I'm sorry. It should be first perceivable. Uh, your auditor should perceive that information. After that, your website should be operable. I will show you the websites which are completely not operable, out of control, uh, should be understandable and easy to get and robust. Please take it in mind when you create applications or when you test the applications. Today, I will show you how to test the applications and uh, you will ask me, hey, why do I need to do that? For example, uh, average salary today is 80,000 up to 120 if, if you have two years of experience. And we still need uh, accessibility testers. Access, assistive de uh, devices, well, we know that uh, blind people, they use braille, braille readers, uh, we have speech, speech to text technologies uh, provided by different companies like Amazon. You can digitalize your speech into text and vice versa. Different switch controllers, the different uh, buttons. Uh, let's say I don't have my hands, right? I just have like Stephen Hugging, just one controller. I'm not, I'm not sure if you see my, uh, my face now. Can you give me the feedback if you have? the picture of my face. Okay, you, you can see that. Uh, let's assume that I only have this uh, controller and, and I operate with my uh, interface like this or like this. Everybody's seen this, right? Okay, the keyboard that is primary, this is the king of all the controllers. The main primary focus is on the keyboard. It has been invented the first and the second we got the mouse controller. The, the first we only got the keyboard. Everything started with the scratch. Uh, sip and puff things when you sip and puff. And like this you can operate. Eye tracker. Uh, actually, if you have MacBook, uh, you're able to uh, operate with that with your eyes. It's looking at you and you able to operate with that. And TTY, uh, if you if you uh, if you're not able to speak, 
you can use that line like you can call and you can chat with special kind of special language kind of okay what else assistive technologies american sign language we have seen that on this slide right this is american sign language this is must be for any government event uh, or you can see that and this is the uh, font type face for uh, dyslexic people like special uh, font uh, reading the books with this font it's easier to them to be on track while reading uh, closed captions also known as transcriptions or I told you and special glasses for colorblind glasses when I've been to Alabama, I, I got a chance even to, to see the spy glass we are with assistive technologies for colorblind uh, uh, affected guys. What, what companies currently contribute uh, to the uh, accessibility market which makes your life easier? Almost every company every good company is concerned with making their products good better and your spot is still still free you can be uh, an accessible why, why i'm so <laughs> i advocate for being an accessible tester i just want to say this is not so difficult okay uh, apple company makes life better dell the meta company x and worldwide web consortium this is the major organizational institution that creates the different uh, rules for web uh, and for the other accessibility areas uh, okay we smoothly uh, okay any questions guys so far, uh, about 25 minutes we spent on the theoretical part. No questions, Any, everything is, is clear for you or questions? Okay, everything is fine. So, uh, one, five minutes more till the end of this presentation, we have literally five, eight slides. And next part after the break will be the practical hands-on the testing for those who are who interested. Okay, the tools of testing, I'll show everything, I'll explain everything. Uh, not having said that we know different uh, impairments like visual impairment, hearing impairment. Accordingly, these tools are um, divided into different types like screen readers uh nothing but just uh, uh voicing over when you're navigating through the product and just uh speaks aloud and saying this element this i will show you now um this is nvda can be used for for windows for pc for jaws for PC, this is percentage breakdown of popularity. Currently, we use this product. VoiceOver is this uh, integrated uh, embedded functionality uh, into Mac, into iOS, into your iPad, whatever. Uh, Android also, we have TalkBack uh, tool for Android devices. So this is the screen readers for blind people not able to see but able to hear. This group is for people who able to see, probably able to hear, but not so well. Like we um, have loss of vision or color blindness. These tools like CCA, which is color contrast analyzer, helps to make your product better okay uh, popular uh, tools like uh, x or wave or accessibility insights or lighthouse from google which is integrated uh, into your uh, testing tool and of chrome google chrome product it's just perfect perfect thing to to know uh, also the main tool for testing of course just knowing the rules of testing 
and you know, we test always we test against so-called WCAG. Currently, uh, this uh, there is a WCAG 2.2. And in the pipeline, we'll have in two or three years, maybe earlier, WCAG 2.3. What is WCAG? Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, also known as, it is pronounced like WCAG. WCAG. Okay. Uh, WCAG is being developed by uh, W3 organization. Thank, thank you. Thanks to them. Uh, You'll get these URLs uh, with testing with examples. We'll go through the Apple website, Dell, uh, this that used to be bad example. Now this is really, really good example. I was surprised. AliExpress is very bad. I don't know. This is traditional classical example for testing. And we have special website from CVS Pharmacy to test and many other things. Okay, how to test, and this is still theoretical thing, uh, practical thing will be not so smooth. How to test, since I mentioned the keyboard is main primary tool, main primary controller, it should be considered first. By the way, this is the main and most favorite uh, test case of Michael Portnoff. Uh, if you remember, he always saying, hey, tap, tap, uh, or shift, tap. Like, use this button to go through all the website and see if all the elements are accessible. I'll show you uh, real quick. Uh, uh, I told you that knowing the uh, rules and guidelines of accessibility of ICAC, are being split into so-called uh, checklists. The checklist is just a fantastical tool for testing. It keeps you on track while uh, while you're doing your testing. It shows you like on um, just visualize you how much did you cover, how much left, uh, where else, uh, percentage of execution. Uh, each and every each and every item should be covered. By the way, if you wondering which is uh, which is contemporary the most common uh, used uh, standard for testing, this is double A, like two letters A A, which is double A. It's just most commonly. Uh, Met standard for testing. There's a crazy standard also is a triple A, but most companies, like 90% of all companies, don't usually usually don't test in that. Also, I don't know any other company using just one A. There is one A standard as well. Okay, checklists are uh, some helpful checklists for you. And just uh, let me show you real quick. This is the checklist. What does it have? It has different uh, areas, different articles to test from standpoint of keyboard, from visualization, from images, pictures, photographs, from text of your structure, how it is uh, broke down. Oh, by the way, there is a uh, single A, double A, and triple A. Yeah, you see that. Controllers. Uh, different mobile devices, different forms. You usually operate so many forms, like crazy amount of different forms, right? Like uh, watching the video on this side, listen to the audio, uh, animation, color contrast, uh, photosensitivity people, uh, like epilepsy, the not, shouldn't be uh, impaired with your website. If your website is blinking, this is just a scene. Okay, uh, this is the checklist. Another checklist uh, for you is just directly from W3 Consortium. It's just a Bible, okay? And then screen reader demo, it's supposed to be demo. It will be uh, just helpful links, Vizbach, uh, Pixar, 
web developer wave i personally don't recommend wave myself uh, for me it, it is not supported anymore we just stopped like two years ago uh, highly recommend this accessibility insights for web this is free tool this is tool that shows you that tells you how to test what to test and how to fix those tips for your developers this is uh, free also A anything from this list is free uh, the helpful links okay this video is right here and the beautiful video from the beginning you can no 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 it's, sorry it's something else but this is also exciting okay your questions and now let me showcase the actual work of our screen reader uh, if you're happy owner of the macbook uh, you can just go directly to the system settings and from the search bar google accessibility being here you see that all four chapters here dedicated to vision impairments hearing troubles motor dis dysfunctions and speech disabilities okay and now we're interested with vision we're not able to see but we wanted to hear that which is voice over uh hope you just yes you can hear me okay and you just turn that on make it active and using voice your on system settings voice over window sidebar table row 2 of 47 accessibility okay Pro. perfect understanding wcag entering understanding wch visited link wc link about wcag understanding dots leaving understanding dot you are visited link label tag top deal link laptop deals okay you are currently on a mission control I items. guess Stasis the idea is clear for you now. You are currently on a group to interact with items in this group. Just give me a sec to bring it down. Okay, voiceover is off. Okay, uh, a lot of different uh, integrated things, such like uh, Zoom text. You see that? Okay, just a perfect trick. Uh, I showed you the voiceover principles, uh, which are directly pulling information from your website. Any voiceover, any voiceover <clears throat> tool is directly associated to structure of, to titles of your website, to headers, uh, to the meaningful uh, structure of your website. Okay, now we're going to have this break of five, seven minutes. And after that, I'll answer your questions, if you have any, and we can, I'll show you case uh, with testing on four or five examples. We will have AliExpress, Dell Technologies, we'll have IRS, Medicaid, Californian website, Apple company, Amazon. Uh, it will be really quick. Okay. I'll give you literally two, three minutes break, or I give break to myself to pull together and we can continue. Now, this uh, job is necessarily requires any real experience that. Um, that really uh, requires your understanding of principles, just basic uh, rules, what you do. As we know, we have the rules and we test against expected result versus actual picture that we have on the front end or we have on the mobile phone. Uh, general answer to your question, no, uh, you just need to be robust in your knowledge. Uh, and you grow along the way. Okay, actually, I have questions for you. I can I can help you with that. Uh, can you hear me now? Any sound troubles? Hey, give me your feedback, please. 
Okay, everything is fine. Appreciate it. Okay, can we actually automate accessibility testing? This is a question. Yes and no. Yes, uh, we kind of can run the quick uh, testing, quick audits using so-called automated tools. Probably some companies they have their internal tooling, but usually <clears throat> talking, talk, talking in terms of uh, automation, I usually uh, refer to the X, uh, this tool, X Dev Tools, which is part of your uh, of your Dev Tools. Go to Inspect, and if you navigate, for example, to uh, you, you can see that right from the hidden menu sub menu. Uh, there is a lighthouse which also can use as accessibility tool and um, this uh, this tool uh, from company X is a major giant of this of this market uh, helps you kind of automate kind of run uh, automated tools I'll give you example I'll give you example in the second part just uh, briefly let's go through all the topics and questions Okay, <clears throat> what does it do at, at the so-called automated testing? Uh, it runs uh, reports. Uh, it all, usually it is manual process with 70% uh, of manual job. Okay, next question. Can we test for accessibility uh, standalone desktop applications? Yes. We what is standalone desktop application? We, we we know this is web based application. For example, if you have Photoshop or if I have I don't know Figma desktop, this is the standalone. <clears throat> By the way, Figma, while you developing developing any design front end for mobile or web. It has integrated plugin. You can pull the plugin from internet. Uh, there is a plenty of different. Uh, actually, this is the testing tool as well. That that early testing tool that we test before release, before actual development started, or while the testing, or sorry, while the development. Uh, yes, we can test the standalone applications same way. How can we test that? We have this uh, tool, just called Accessibility Insight for Web. This is nothing but just add-on or like a plugin to your uh, browser. Next question: Can we test like uh, McDonald's or airport kiosk? That uh, that interface, yes, we can test it using the same things, the same principles, same toolings. What, uh, in, because within the kiosk, we just have this touch bar screen and we have that <clears throat> interface. Can we test mobile devices? Of course, we test mobile devices as well. Can we test TV or streaming platforms? We must test that because when with the remote, you go through the navigation, you have that outliner. I will show you. Do we have the rules and acceptance criteria? Of course, of course, we have 2.2 currently, not 2.0. Okay, those major questions you may wonder about. Uh, for those who are still with us, who not like this guy, I'll start with testing. Now, uh, let me show you the best example ever okay we have 14 minutes left i'm not sure why uh probably to keep you focused uh what i'm actually doing now actually i just take my major testing tool which is keyboard and everything starts with the keyboard and i just start uh, tabbing through the website. I just hit that key on my actual keyboard forward. Also, I can go backwards, which is back 
and tab button. I can escape using escape. I can enter using enter. I can go with the cursors. Okay, let's start. Uh, what actually we should uh, pay attention to while testing. If you see that screen, right? I make it bigger. We have sub menu, uh, menu, different elements. If we usually use mouse controller, uh, but some folks use the keyboard. Uh, tabbing through the uh, website, what, what we what first thing you see? You see this blue outliner, which shows you, which gives you a clue where you are currently. Uh, using your keyboard, uh, the main principle says that you must get visual indication of the element. This is first. The next, uh, like element should, uh, you should reach out that element. It should be accessible with your uh, let me go back or let me go to to the menu sub menu oh you see that drop down right i hit the enter i see the sub menu and hitting escape i'm expecting personally that fold it down uh, okay that's weird nice. it's an issue perfect even any perfect website has the issues Okay, uh, now let me show you the worst example ever. This is AliExpress. I just go to the main page. It's my first app launch ever. I use the same methodology. Uh, do you see any outliner? No, but if you look at this uh, portion of the screen, you can see that links are changed. That means somewhere on the background, the navigation is ongoing uh, but please look at this portion of, of this part of the website i tab 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 and every tab brings its own url we can see that link there is a link but i don't see it with my eyes probably but i don't believe the screen reader will will help mm, but no wait the cvs pharmacy what we're doing we see the same right situation we see this uh these links are changed but there is no actual uh, uh but and also we see that page scrolls down right you just noted that page scrolls down i go up with a shift and backspace and tab scrolls us on the top but there is no actual uh indication of a focus okay the next thing uh, let's say the color counters and why it is important let's say you're a colorblind person and you're not able to see uh to recognize the red from from uh, for for you for example you see like in the gray scale i have this tooling which uh, changes the <clears throat> situation for you I select the gray scale and <clears throat> for you to look like this. Why it's important to make, uh, to take it in mind while developing or while testing. Let's say you found the issue and say, hey, this is not an acceptable criteria. Uh, le le let's do it more accessible. Let's do it more marketable and competitive. Or uh, you can use like a, uh, increased contrast right or you, it's normal it's yellow on black also gives you some clue while uh, graphical testing i hope the idea is is clear like uh what is color contrast understanding let's say we have <clears throat> a gray uh, okay keep in mind that being uh like seen in the grayscale, this, this red link will, will be gray for you. And that means that color contrast, what is color contrast? This is the ratio, this is contrast between this background against this foreground. Uh, this is, uh, let's say this is a good example. Okay, but, but let, let's see, 
let's look at this website. From standpoint of uh, color contrast, I, I would say this is not not acceptable. Uh, I want to show you this uh, small add-on, which is called Visbug. It is in our presentation. It is Visbug. You just with Visbug, you select this eye, this eye guy, uh, and you hover over the the elements you want to check. Oh, sorry, you, you select uh, the access, accessibility thing and hovering over the things, uh, it, it shows you that, look, uh, double A, triple A, that even not complied to double A criterion, and the color contrast of red of this foreground, which is closer ground, closer layer against the background is not accessible this is violation uh, like we need to make this uh, red color like deeper more contrast we, we just smoothly change the color on the on front on front end let's say you go to just to inspect also you can go to inspect <clears throat> looking at elements you can find your css file and you can see that color is used this RGB according to the RGB model is in this one. I'm picking this. Uh, I can show you that tooling which is called color contrast analyzer along with this bug. This is kind of same thing, but in color contrast analyzer we have a dropper which is able to uh, to pick a color for you. Boom, we just pick that color the same yeah and it says uh the rule number 14.3 um, is violated the color contrast minimum you can de uh, dig inside and you can see that for uh font sizes of 18 18 points up to 24 points it must be at least 4.5 against one this is the ratio you will get it later but this is just generic idea for you like that that color let's say if we change this color i'm not a front-end developer but let's play with that like if you make it uh, let's say we did it okay <laughs> we just broke everything <clears throat> yeah this is the color contrast analyzing uh, looking different small and major issues uh, in your web interfaces, uh, this is part of accessibility testing. Knowing good UI test, if you do belong to graphical design, it will be easier for you. Uh, okay, this is the primary tool I want to really, really show you, uh, which is called accessibility um, insights for web. Uh, what does it have? It has everything for you for testing how to test, what to test, uh, how to fix. Uh, you where can you get this tool? You just go to uh, to your Google and search like accessibility insights. Uh, I'm lazy. Add on, okay, or Google, okay. And uh, here it is, accessibility insights for web. Just go and just install from the from the marketplace. It is installed. I just only can remove it. And since this is installed, we can test with that. Open any other website you want to test. Let's say it will be Dell or any other website, like a Facebook. Just open that at home and select assessment. Mm, it will be I uh selection start new or continue previous testing now we're starting the new testing uh, it has the structure of of testing for us okay uh you can do automatic check it's already scanning this is kind of uh automation 
okay, keyboard, why, why I started with keyboard testing? Because, because I told you twice, this is primary to uh, for keyboard controllers, there are different uh, criteria for focus, for structure, inner structure of the website, for heading structure, <clears throat> uh, links must have uh, descriptive texts, must have uh, area attributes, uh, uh, different pictures must have uh, descriptions. Uh, let's assume you're a blind person, but you want to buy this beautiful iPhone, you go to website and be navigated to this picture, it will speak aloud. Uh, I watch uh, series three, for example, or iPhone uh, 15 Pro and so on. Okay, and this beautiful tooling has different things to do. You just go through this checklist. We have five minutes left. Uh, I appreciate everybody for for your questions today. If you have any questions, you have beautiful chance to ask me now. Just generic, generic presentation, guys, for you. What is accessibility world? What we test, how we test. Okay. Yeah, I have a question from from channel. Can accessibility testing be our first job in quality assurance? Yes, it can be, of course. And what to learn to make it happen? If yes, uh, you can start with beautiful links from this presentation. You just immediately can start watching but first of all you need to finish this school to get the basic knowledge of testing rules uh, from this section helpful links for example uh, you can visit apple website highly recommends you to watch that what is accessibility uh, start with watching all this video i just i just was was inspired not this actually not this guy sorry okay uh later on i'll i'll share some links with you oh yeah okay 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 i guess i see that video bad guys you need to start watching just another hour and a half of this uh, lecture the, this guy is from australia is really awesome he's speaking about advocates about the accessibility actually he talks about how to test common issues he's a really talented guy and just give you um, a direction to that. I see the questions are coming. Let's discuss. Uh, it's not outdated. Uh, it's like uh, just five years. The basic principles still stay with us. This cannot be outdated. Information is never perishable. Uh, in latest WCAG 2.2, we just uh, revisited one or two articles and added three more articles, such as like if you navigate on your UI interface on the mobile and you have your small uh, element, UI element, it is called uh, size of the point of contact. It should be it should be bigger or it should have uh, at least a minimum size it never been described but some, some testers really naturally felt that okay i guess we can wrap this session michael uh if you can stop this recording i guess we're ready to stop
Okay, what is the approach for this testing? I mean, the same as another application only for the side of people with disabilities. And can I elaborate on a question? I'm not really, I don't believe I really understand. Approach for which one testing? For which testing you're referring? Xenia. Uh, I, I would say the approach uh, comes through all the devices, through all the platforms. Uh, this way, CAC, uh, we use use it everywhere on any device, on any platform. Uh, yeah, sure. For different types of disabilities, we use, uh, like, we check each and every web website for all the criterions, for all the folks, for folks with the vision impairments, with mental impairments, and so on. Just pay attention when President of the United States speaking on the audience, he speaks very simple and any any nation can understand him. The speech writers doing their job in terms of accessibility, the speech should be accessible as well. Like uh, there is a criterion like kind of kind of your speech should be closer to sixth grader, like a sixth grader should understand you. <laughs> 